Bobby Spiking Spike and Chrome Man. It's a Tuesday, the 6th of June. I'm here with Winston. I'm here with Michael. After WWDC 2023, if you don't know what WWDC is, it's Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference, where they announce all your latest in the software. And sometimes you get to experience, well, not sometimes, I think... For, for a while now, WWDC announces new Apple hardware, not phones. So yeah, you get to know if there's going to be a new Mac. And this year, there was something out of the ordinary. Something quite missing from Apple's list of usual announcements for a while. Something visionary. Yeah. See what I did there? Yes, I do. we do see it. We, we see it more. No, yeah. I mean, if you squint, it could be the phone <laughs> of the future. Well, yeah, if you do squint hard enough. Hmm. So, with that being said, and with that announcement, we're going to talk about all the things that were announced from the... Well, is there anything least to the greatest? Well, yeah, we can say some of them were the least impressive to the <laughs> yeah. very greatly impressive hmm objectively that is well yeah if you're from the apple camp yeah and if you're a tech if, aficionado if you're a techie it there were a lot of objectively impressive things to be yeah. seen yeah hmm so where do we start from let's start from going for a break for an ad <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to take a quick commercial break when we come back we're going to talk about ios 17 ipad os watch os New MacBook, um, new Mac OS Soma. Mac OS Sonoma. I, I thought it was Soma. Somania. The first time I saw, I was like, "Is that Somania?" And then I looked critically. I was like, "I don't know." Why is Somania? That we know of. Mac Mac OS Somania. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll talk about Vision Pro. We'll be right back. And these are the tech headlines this week. Uh, Linda Yakaroni replaces elon musk as twitter boss now if you didn't know this um elon musk tweeted a few months ago whether he should step down as the president of um twitter and 57 percent said yes so he's got a replacement miss yakarino i'm sorry and she's from advertising at nbc universal she joined twitter a few days ago Second, Microsoft will be paying $20 million to the U.S. federal regulators after it was found to have illegally collected data on children who had started Xbox accounts. This is similar to the same charge that was given to Amazon for its Echo devices taking data on kids. Next, MoveIt, a software that is used to move files securely, has been hacked. Due to this hack, the BBC, British Airways, Boots and many other companies uh, have been affected by this some staff members have been told that their personal data including national insurance numbers date of birth and even in some cases bank details may have been stolen but no ransom has been issued out now i like the movie, movie. <laughs> next youtube will stop in a very interesting move youtube will stop removing videos with false claims of fraud in the 2020 presidential elections now the social media platform announced on friday that this is the new move and they said this was happening because they believed they were infringing on the first amendment and that even though they were removing misinformation they believed they were tramping on democracy interesting mm. next is the u.s has shot the biggest crypto trading platform in the country with operating illegally widening its crackdown on the industry so the sec says that coinbase that is the largest crypto trading platform acted as a broker exchange and clearing agency for investments that are subject to sec rules without proper registration so basically coinbase was selling out stuff they were not allowed to things that hadn't been cleared by the sec and finally apple had its wwdc event yesterday and we begin the show from there okay <music> Thank you very much, <laughs> producer Abiku. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, Apple WWDC. While you're listening, I'd like to share. I'd like for you to share with us what your favorite announcement was. And my my guess is it's all going to be Vision Pro, Vision Pro. But then again, I'm still <laughs> going to ask what your favorite announcement was and 
why it's not just what it was let me know why zero five five quadruple one nine nine seven zero five five eleven eleven nine nine seven zero five five one 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 nine nine seven share with me what was your favorite announcement if you did watch a wwdc from wwdc and let us know why that is your favorite so first off apple started talking about as usual health stuff mindfulness watch os and now watch os can do widgets again so watch os could do widgets before Mm-hmm. They then took it away. they took it away and then they brought, brought it back, it back. your <sighs> thoughts gentlemen to be honest i kind of blacked out during the watch os conversation i was i don't know man so michael kindly handle this one i mean widgets is for not those who don't know what widgets are okay Android users will be used <laughs> to this. I'm sorry, this is something Spike should have said, but anyway, I'll say Android will be used to this. Widgets are little sub pieces of information or sub apps you can put on the desktops, on your desktops of phones and some uh, computers that you can use to get additional information without opening the associated app. Yeah, so, so easy access to information. Yeah. Yeah. For instance, weather, the weather widgets. Weather, I mean, if you're using an Android, you most likely have, have a weather lot. widget so if you see the weather icon on your screen that's telling you the weather right now that's a widget even the google search bar on your on your home, home screen, screen is, is a widget, widget. so, so apple, that you don't have to open google so apple users before you shout that i mean unfair yes we too have it now when if, uh, from as far back as I, ios in 14 or but that's very interesting anyway <laughs> yes please continue so now but it has only been on recently been on iPhones and Androids, uh, sorry, iPhones and iPads only. Mm. Now, it's on your watch again. They yeah. brought it back. <laughs> Return yes, of again. the Mac. <sighs> That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> it was on the, it's, actually, yeah, speaking on the Mac, yeah, it's also on Mac OS as well, mm. yes. which makes you wonder why didn't they do that long ago because it works so well for iOS and iPad. iPad why not OS. there? But yeah, finally, it's here. And pretty much the same amount of information, you just r- swipe up on the scroll, use a scroll wheel, swipe up, and then you get the widgets. All the widgets and all these little pieces of information you want without having to now search for and open the associated app. For me, it was quite interesting that Apple hasn't hadn't kept the widgets on. I always wondered why because, they took them off. Yeah, why they took it off? Because the, with the size of the screen and with how widgets are designed, they're designed for a quick glance you get all the information that you need i mean if people could turn all their messaging apps into widgets and stuff like that many people would and i think that many companies should actually look in that direction so that your watches can be more powerful because it's not as loaded it's not as front end loaded Mm. on your but i guess maybe they realized that oh okay the widgets were actually a very important thing and that's why they brought it back cool Cool. presumably they got a lot of telemetry data from people using it's on their phones because yes your phones will share information about how you use it but yeah. won't say that it is you and it was okay widgets are really quite a thing fine let's see how we can put it back there and also expand the use to max so well widgets galore yeah and there's another thing about watch apple watch that was introduced which was very interesting it was a lot of focus on cycling it's a lot of focus on golfing and tennis as we're seeing on the screen right now so for people who want to measure their their swing during a serve their swing during a a golf what do you call it when they the first it's not any golfers any golfers lexus (laughs) well yeah lexus is in the studio with us let me ask lexus what do you call the first swing when you're playing golf oh tee off yeah A a swing so, like, uh, from the beginning, now uh, it's a swing. Isn't it tee-off? <laughs> it's a tee-off. Well, golfers, if you're listening... <laughs> Please tell us. <laughs> like you said, it's a swing. Maybe, I don't know if it's a swing or a seesaw. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Michael, you said you didn't know, but now I said tee-off. Now, I'm, 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 I'm beginning to... Yeah, but then again, you could be right, because it's a tee. Yeah. Well, like, grew up reading encyclopedia books for Shigeru reasons. Well, so, yeah. So, yes. That. Now you can measure. And I learned something I forget. I learned a term for the rotation of your wrists in tandem 
with the swing. There's actually a term for that measurement. Really? Yes, there is. I forgot the term. I for mean, the life of me, for for the first time watching a a tech conference, I learned something out mm. of tech that I never knew. I mean, I did. Re- I do remember randomly seeing something. It was FP something, mm. and I think that was for cycling. Mm-hmm. You were uh, uh, yeah. talking about measuring your speed and some stuff, but yeah, that's all nice and fun. I just had a thought. Considering the similarity in the movement style, will it work if you are cutting grass with a cutlass? Bruv. Honestly. So you're, you're honestly imagining <laughs> someone cutting. Baba about to cut the grass w- with, with his, his langa langa, wearing an Apple Watch, measuring their the swing. swing. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> For what reason? Okay. Well, what is Baba trying to figure out? Look, we live in a big world. If Baba has come caught, caught up with the you, times you, and was data, you know what? You how know to what? improve its efficiency mid At this point, if you get the new Mac OS, we'll try this to yeah. see if we can actually trigger that that uh, feature. By Baba just will probably break the scale because Charlie, the angle with which they swing that langa langa is not. See what records being set. <laughs> Okay, now moving on from this conversation, because I honestly don't know how we got here talking about swing and what's not. Anyway, yeah, so Apple Watch, then AirPods got audio upgrades. Mm. Anybody care about that information? The only thing I actually was very interested in is the fact that what happened to the AirPods Max? It's, it's still there. It's, it's not something there. that is conversated about a lot. I remember mm. when it came hefty price and now nothing. Hmm. We barely hear anything about it. I mean, it's now. there. Just go spend the money for it. So, something did occur to me though when they announced the new capabilities of the airport and not just that, all the new little, little updates they do. Remember last week we spoke about how what Apple's approach to mm. AI and everything is? Ah, uh, yeah. I think this is what well, these little changes and all are the results of their approach to that mm-hmm. remember they can come out and just say oh we have an AI that will pull all your data and mm-hmm. do all these things for you but hello like, as technology vendors we need to know how best we can sort you out we can re- give you what you want but mm-hmm. well, what we think you want so we need data to do that now your data can your device will collect a lot of anonymous data and i'm sure this surely have highly advanced AI and machine learning things that can filter because the fact that just by someone speaking to you, the thing can read the intention and like, oh, you can then pay attention to this person mm-hmm. and then once the conversation stops, you resume right where no device can run that on its own except when it has then been taught these are the patterns or mm-hmm. the little not even full on part, little micro patterns in what someone yeah. does when they are giving attention yeah if it can tell oh you've like turned, you your, turned head, your head you turned yeah. your head to this person when you yeah. when there was a voice you know the yeah. voice increase the, voice the increase. head turn means that you want to listen yeah, to this you're person maintaining focus you. you're not turning away mm-hmm. like all these little little things are feeding to say oh this is what someone does to tell that someone is speaking to yeah. across various languages like i mean uh, i think we can actually based on uh yesterday's stuff we can notice that apple is focused more on machine learning and pattern recognition pattern recognition has been their thing for the longest time mm-hmm. now with even especially with face id yeah. face id has is like one of the best uh, case studies for what pattern recognition is and now we even Tim Cook actually said uh, yesterday that their drive into AI is going to be focused on being very thoughtful. I don't really know what that means, but what I'm gathering from everything that happened yesterday is that the focus is they are not here to do a natural language processor. They are not here to do a chat GPT. They are not here to do a bad yet. What they are going to focus on is little things that will help the phone learn more about you and help to and make improve, your life easier. yeah improve your use of it so hmm. i think this was even made uh clear in the keyboard but that's something for the ios conversation yeah so the airpods and audio upgrades essentially will combine noise cancelling with intelligent audio to drown out annoying background noise while letting through important sounds like car horns or biker bells so while you're wearing your ipod your airpods mm-hmm. walking around and there's a trot trot behind you honking, ping, ping, ping. You should hear that. Even though it's drowning out all the other noises, 
So maybe there's somebody doing a cutting those those chainsaw, you know, yeah. operator somewhere. It will drown that out. But when it hears pay pay pay, it will let that in. And yeah, pattern, that's know? some good pattern recognition. Yeah. So and it will also let v- um, voices pass in case someone starts a conversation. I have only one question. Yeah. Does that mean to allow the fan fan nice people pull up, pull up. <laughs> sound through? <laughs> These are fun things that we could actually test. Yeah. So, moving on from that, to your favorite, Mac OS and Shoma Somanya Sonoma. Yeah, a lot has changed and nothing has changed. Well, yeah, widgets like we've mentioned. But yeah. the most important thing for me, when this whole WD- WWDC was going on, I was thinking, you know, what, what would happen if I decide to go into the Apple ecosystem? What mm. would I miss? And one thing just hits me, playing games. Yo, that's gaming. one thing I'd miss. <laughs> yeah, because I'm not a console gamer; I'm a PC gamer, gamer, and I have never, for the life of me, experienced gaming on Macs since my first Apple Macintosh Mac Two, playing Lord Runner and Dark Castle and mm. um, F1 in black and white, <laughs> <laughs> and crashing the whole time, thinking I was driving. But yeah, that's the last time I ever played a game on a Mac. Mm. And to think that we have AAA titles on PC games, and you can't get those on a Mac is what probably dissuades me from getting on a Mac. But Apple is saying that they're going to be changing that. Yes. Or they're hoping, they're hoping. to change that. It is a very interesting thing that Apple that is typically at the forefront of any form of optimization when it comes to software development mm-hmm. is now at the tail end when it comes to gaming. Maybe because they've never really made gaming a focus, mm. which is actually very shocking because their devices tend to be very... They are graphic-based devices, devices that have very good GPUs, are very, very good GPUs, except when there was some fiasco with the Intel stuff. <laughs> that was just a, a short run. But it's very surprising, and I do agree. I, I, I do. We used to use an iMac a lot, and then it's great for everything, but you can't play games. And it's always been a stumbling factor for me that I need my laptop to be able to do all things. And just the mere fact that you know, with the Apple MacBooks, plugged, whether they are on charge or not on charge, they give you the same power mm. output. If you didn't know, if you are listening to this, if you are doing something on your laptop and it is not on a powered source, if you've noticed, it's much slower than when you connect it to a power outlet. So In my case, it's not if. <laughs> There's no if. The if is actually an acronym for in fact. In fact. <laughs> it is very slow. Yeah, it is a fact. So if you didn't notice this, if you are someone who is doing something on your computer and you need it to be a little faster plug it into the power source you get a, a, a lot more sometimes 20 to 30 percent more performance mine is probably 50 to 70 <laughs> percent <laughs> more <laughs> performance yeah but it's the, my thing about mac os though is that increasingly there's a point of convergence coming between ipad os and mac os mm. they should just drop one and, and give us touchscreen MacBooks. And let's just go on with that. And lives. people will stop buying iPads. That's no. the problem. That's the thing. So, exactly. But now, right now, they've even put final cuts. Recently, they announced. Mm. And people, I, th- I haven't even asked Salasi if he's used this. Shocking. I should ask him. They put a uh, final uh, cut and I've forgotten Lumia, I think, mm. on iPad OS. And it's like, okay, if I have an iPad Pro with the M chip yeah, M1, in there. M2. That means that I will be able. I don't need my MacBook to edit basic YouTube videos mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But that means that what is the salient variance between iPad OS and Mac OS? Now that you've added widgets to, to Mac, Mac OS, that point of convergence is coming even more. Yeah. So the only difference right now is touch. Yes, the touch input. Yes, and it's, pen. Isn't that strange? No, Michael. What do you think? Or, and reduce our income stream absolutely not absolutely not <laughs> i mean this is a company that created the apple pencil to be stuck into the the rear end of the ipad to charge like it. a tail <laughs> yes and if you don't want to go through that stress you buy a cable mm. that allows you to charge it you extend the tail extend the tail <laughs> you get it we're always looking for ways to make more money. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's good business. And it is a business that is stemmed from the ability to, for the lack of a better term, have a cultic fan base. A fan base that is so dependent on the products that they provide that it's very difficult to come out. But you will be happy to know that they've improved their porting tools so you can, if developers see, want to appeal to that 
a massive quotes cultic fan base mm. they what do you call it it's easier for them to say okay you know what here are some pc programs where there's a market of people who want to use these pc programs to make fine it is much easier for them to get access to games included i, I think the most the most the revolutionary that thing that would happen on the mac infrastructure or mac os infrastructure is actually getting triple a games on there like mm. proper proper gets that would, that would cause a very very huge shift because yes because apples have the best battery battery life. life and if i'm getting the same performance whether i'm charging it or not charging it and uh, selassie's m1 last M1 can last him a week before he charges it again and that's even with him I editing use it. he does <laughs> okay not as much yeah he's on and off about it but it's like we are getting to a point where the mac os has to give up this pseudo exclusivity and iffiness about gaming but and just jump in they're there. trying to stop they're that. trying yeah. the fact that they got the whole hideo kojima to come on there for those who don't know hideo kojima metal gear solid thank you very much yeah <laughs> they come to announce uh, what you call it the director's uh, cut edition of death stranding that stranding is free on epic stores yeah that so doesn't it's matter not, it's not, it's that not, doesn't matter to the conversation it's not a particularly great game okay well i don't let us not get into a conversation about gaming yeah. and how it is here's the thing apple says we've created a tool that will let gamers uh, game developers port make it easy for game developers to port their games or to migrate their games, games from, from mac from windows to or from yeah. pc so you're not making a whole new game yeah you're all over again you're literally just taking it converting placing but you see i I, i'm inclined to not trust a company that has never particularly been in the business of gaming to i mean uh we thought projects red were going to kill it with cyberpunk and then it came and it was in shambles they've been in the business for (laughs) how long and you today you've come you say oh we've made it easy for you to port how do you determine that it is easy for me to well your infrastructure your silicon infrastructure alone is different from everybody's own yeah so which is why they would bring you the translator yeah so it's on them it's on them to make it easier for people to be able to put games on and the fact that they're trying to do it now is that you know what we are missing out on this big market because this is the thing i was watching Linus tech tips um review on the wwdc event and you know the highlights for the mac we're quickly segueing into the new max the m2 ultra yeah two m2 maxes put together yeah, 76 core gpu like yeah. these are radical numbers never before heard Crazy. but then run a game on it and it will stutter <laughs> like <laughs> will it even run <laughs> oh, so, some i mean you might get it to it run will, it will take run. a lot of work you can, you can emulate issue. it yes. run, run is a strong way maybe yeah. it's just walk <laughs> oh yeah run is indeed a strong word so you know, it's like, oh, I've got the power, but I can't carry a bucket, bucket of water. Mm. You, you know, I can I lift weights, but I can't carry. Or maybe I have six packs and huge arms, but I can't carry this cup of tea. Isn't I, that weird? That's weird. <laughs> yeah. So but, that's what they're saying that they've created this tool for. Yeah, that. but I mean, the one thing that would make it absolutely mega when it comes to gaming on Mac is the gaming. They had this gaming mode mm. that would put priority of GPU, CPU. Yes. Now, another interesting thing about the Mac infrastructure is that if you are lacking in um, RAM, it actually transforms your ROM into RAM. Where well, your ROM is your CD-ROM. Your ROM is your, <laughs> your disk, your drive space. Mm. It's able to transform some of your drive space into RAM. Well, PCs already do that. Yes, but I've I've Page used file. I've used Apple's old and it's it's very seamless. Well, it's the same as Linux. If you've used run Linux on a PC, mm-hmm. you'd experience similar. So it's all in the. In the last uh, time I used a Linux, I was in JSS. Don't worry. I mean, look, even at the most basic level, macOS is based on Linux anyway. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's Unix based, but yeah. So, but the point is that if they do really get into the gaming, imagine that your cyberpunk is lagging and it just takes a chunk of your ROM, turns it into RAM to just support. That means that I don't think the frames will ever drop. We love to see. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, you, you talked about the M2 stuff, Michael. As our resident Appleist, I fell asleep at that point. How do you f- feel about the M2 stuff? And the cheese grater. Crispy says, two. Crispy says, as for ROM into RAM, the some phone said they do ROM right now. He mentioned some phone <laughs> brand. I can't say it on air, but yeah, you get the drift. Yeah. But uh, yeah, my yeah, phone. Speaking of which, my phone does that. 
takes some of my storage and adds it. So right now my phone has 20 gig RAM. Yeah. RAM. More than somebody's phone. <laughs> More than somebody's <laughs> laptop. <laughs> yes. Look, is there a moon outside and I'm going to do full social <laughs> comparison? <laughs> anyway. Actually, there is. <laughs> so, so, yes. New Macs. Ah, yeah. 15-inch. Which <clears throat> 15 inch MacBook Air? It defeats mm. the purpose of the Air to me. I thought the Air was so it should have mo- been 15 inch MacBook Wind. No, I can't. <laughs> because I, it defeats the Air. I, for me, I thought the Air was the very basic Envelope. introduction into like who asked for a, a bigger Air? The people who use Air have never wanted a bigger screen. Because the air is basically the introductory. It's like, think about the air like this. The air and the iPad are almost the same. One has touch. They are about the same size with everything. The only difference is that one opens up like a book and has keyboard attached to it when you buy it. Permanently. And doesn't have touch interface. Normally, their their, um, capabilities are quite quite similar the air is just for introduction the same way people tell you that go and buy chromebook if you're a pc user Mm. the air is apple's version of the chromebook although it is going to disgrace any chromebook (laughs) scrub the floor with it (laughs) with it so a 15 and the air was i remember the first time the air was introduced Mm. by steve jobs he was holding a file yeah it was an envelope. An Those envelope, brown yes. envelopes. And it was in it. Yeah, and he just took it out and everybody went crazy. crazy. And now you have a 15-inch air. Why? Because sometimes air is very strong and <sighs> it can blow things. Not up. to mention the price point. How much is it? It was twelve ninety nine, I think, starting. Yeah, so twelve ninety nine. That's wild. $1,300. Yes, that's, that's a- like... In Ghana money, 14k. Double up. Why do, why do you do that? Double up. Don't do the conversion. The Ghana money. No, 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 no. Ghana. Nah, no. If the 14k is not enough, double up. Add, add the... Oh, yeah, AC, taxes. The AC stuff. you go sleep inside, the taxes, the shipping. But you see, what I didn't understand was that there's already the 16-inch MacBook Pro. Mm-hmm. There's a 14-inch MacBook Pro. Mm-hmm. There's a 13-inch MacBook Air. Yes. There's an 11 inch MacBook Air. Where There's a MacBook. There is. What again? To like me, the only argument for the MacBook Air 15 inch is that, okay, maybe these people are casual consumers of content and they want a bigger screen. Mm. That's the only reason why they. Or maybe for students who want a bigger screen under 13. But to be That's honest, I don't level. know. The, the I, I, think, I think, okay, here's the thing for me it makes sense. Right, the 15 inch MacBook Air makes sense, but we would have to compare all the price points. Maybe you know, they're probably doing what um, their competitor Samsung does with phones, filling every single yeah. price point. Fair, somebody wants to buy a laptop, they don't want a pro, but they don't want too, a small air, yeah, and, and that's too small. Or, or maybe they want a big screen, but it's only really available on pro, on pro, and they don't want, I mean, a pro is too much money yeah. if you're going to get. A 16 inch MacBook Pro, and you've never, you are never going to edit a video in your life, yeah, or edit a photo in your life. That's too much money to pay for it. So, like, I think the, the, what do you call it? The compromise was too much, so that's why they decided to introduce this yeah, to be in the middle. Okay, so fine. yeah, that's cool. Then you have the Mac Studio, which is for those who don't know, the Mac Studio is the Mac Mini when it ate Super Mario's mushroom, yeah, so yeah, it grew a bit. So on proverbial steroids yeah it actually does have steroids because it's very powerful hey yo i'm not gonna lie yeah so if so is a mac that went to the gym yes yes pretty much uh, and what do you call that had his heart broken went L- to the gym and liver I'm, king do you guys know the liver king Jerry, nope. that guy's a fake <laughs> the, the yeah he's a fake king. he does what but the mac scene i'm not <laughs> the m2 ultra yeah mm-hmm i want a device like that simply because of this i mean first off they did tell us that saturday night live runs his live programming on an on a mac studio because they can have how many was it 16 concurrent mm-hmm. 8k streams yeah for those who do not uh do <laughs> yeah, he has to sit up. yeah for those who don't do video stuff and do not under- know how content is brought to you be it tv or youtube or films editing is a particularly annoying thing very now here's the thing if you have 10 cameras 
right and you record everything from multiple angles what happens during editing is that you take the footage from all the 10 with the nine cameras put it into your computer and now you're coming to sync everything make sure that whatever was said here tallies to whatever was said in this mm-hmm. other angle after you do that before you do the cutting and everything but imagine this if you are live streaming or you're live connected to the mac studio with a switcher you can cut your movie your program whatever your youtube video live and you don't have to edit you just have to color grade after that is why i want a mac studio so that means that if during a show like let's say for instance we are here and you you saw my hand if you are watching us on youtube this man just geeked out on video editing and made it seem like it's some life-changing decision it is it is going to save you so much time Uh, i've i can't not agree with him because i've been under i've we've been under that stress before like editing people seem to think that editing is one two clicks I mean, yeah i and, mean it's cup cuts man yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. editing man it's not. we it just is, load it into cup cuts and it is done it and is it's done it is impossible it is so tedious it i is. wish this was a more attractive i could show you what a v- an Video edited timeline. view mm. looks like you have all of these i get you you see the thing is even visualizing it for someone who doesn't understand the technology or the whole process it would still not make any sense mm-hmm. it's like people sit down and watch and they come and they see your screen and like what is all what this, is all this? <laughs> that's all they can say what is all this or if they're actually waiting for you to work on it and like what is taking so, so long? long yeah then they can't they sit down and look and like oh like oh. l- even when people have watched i've experienced people watch someone work on like a very complex something and to them yeah it's just going about scrolling clicking scrolling clicking scrolling clicking you, you know they are not holding a hoe and a cutlass and uh, mm-hmm. or a hammer and a nail we, we had chisel. i think i've told yeah, the story before yeah, but we had we had an experience where a client mm. was like okay i have a free day let me spend the day with you guys and see what you guys are doing because you had to edit something and he needed it before the next day so he said he was going to spend the whole day this was a very busy man who had a free day so to, this man stayed with us till 3 a.m the next day he paid us extra and gave us a free drone he told <laughs> us that our job is extremely difficult and tedious because imagine this if i shoot a five hour program with three cameras i have to watch five hours three oh, times <laughs> before i even start to cut and cutting means that okay maybe I don't like as, this part. as in basically he walked from front to back and this camera angle is here so he went and then when he got to the front there's a camera that is facing him i want to switch to that the mac studio so basically you need a mac studio i i would love to have a mac studio between a mac studio and a mac pro the cheese grater mac pro mm. which one would you take i'll take a mac studio even if someone was telling me that i'll foot the bill for all of it the mac studio is far more portable so you take a mac studio and then a xdr pro display uh, say, say free if it's free yeah i'll take it <laughs> free what <laughs> in this economy <laughs> so wisdom says good evening geeks it seems you guys don't know how people have been drooling over this 15 inch macbook air apparently we don't mm. there are people who really want the size of macbook but not too powerful and heavy like a 16 inch macbook pro so there's a huge market for it keep up the good work guys i really enjoyed this program thank you very much wisdom i told you yeah that's what spikey says i told don't know. you for me i think getting two extra inches at that price point charlie i would i would rather not mm. not so we're oh. going to take a quick commercial break when we come back we're going to talk about the one that you guys have all been waiting for the apple vision pro before yes go, go there. something just apple keeps ski. occurring to me as they talk about the new macbook mm. air it's thinner than they just brought spiky's laptop into yeah. the studio <laughs> right <laughs> Now, everybody, please please switch no, the, the don't ad. switch. <laughs> let, let me explain <laughs> what is happening here. And see, Banana Kwesi says that he's lost. So allow me to explain, right? Spikey's laptop is the size of a car engine, ah. right? But the new MacBook Air is actually thinner than his screen. I think it's about hint. the size of his screen, it's the screen side of his laptop. So Nanakwesi says it lost. Nanakwesi, why, why? I think probably you you didn't watch the Worldwide Developers Congress conference. But please <laughs> tell us what you are lost on, on. so that we ca- we catch up with you after the break. We're back. Yes, the show is Geek Squad on Tuesdays, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Joy FM where we talk about tech. And since today is Tuesday and yesterday was Monday and yesterday was the Apple WWDC 23 where Apple announced a lot of the new features for their OSs, the Mac OS, 
iPad OS, iOS, Watch OS, and they announced new devices, a new MacBook Pro 13 inch, a new Mac Pro with M2 Ultra, which is Apple's own processor. So Apple's made their own processor. They're no longer taking processors from Intel. Apple's been doing that since the M1. Now we're on the M2. And they announced the M2 Ultra, which is essentially two M2 Maxes mated together. Then they also announced the Mac Studio, which Winston is drooling over here. We had to get him a tissue to wipe his lips. <laughs> <laughs> but then, yes, and they announced what we're about to discuss now. The Apple Vision no. Pro. Yeah, sorry. I just wanted to make a very quick announcement right. in case people get confused. iOS 17 support has stopped for the iPhone 10 and 8. iPhone so, 10 and 8? Yes. iPhone 10 is dead already. Yep. Wow. Oh, isn't that quite recent? Yeah, I just feel like. Yeah, feels not wow. that long ago. But yeah, now this is it so four years so five years and even i'm sure a lot of people who have been using still using the iphone 10 and moved on to ios 16 have noticed that suddenly it's not able to handle lots of things yeah like this is it that's the last you will so, not be able to go up to 17 so that's much, iphone x for those yeah, who don't know yeah. roman rumors for 10 iphone 10 users you're not going to get ios 17 i'm very sorry iphone 8 users as well you're not going to get iphone 7 a ios 17 so yep. you need to upgrade yep you right have, you do if you want to stay in the ecosystem yes so apple vision pro now this was very interesting to me because i'm a vr fanboy i have an htc vive i have an oculus quest 2 in your I, car right now yes <laughs> in my bag actually right yeah. here where because i i carry vr along everywhere because i love immersion you know and i love the experience with virtual reality and i mean before i go to the end part let me start with the butt part but you start VR, with the end face the butt part <laughs> because vr technology hasn't really caught up yeah. mm -hmm. you know there's the uh, the the question of cost mm -hmm. there's a question of the technology not being too accessible mm -hmm. and there's a question of content because mm -hmm. for you to enjoy vr somebody has to develop content somebody has to develop softwares that you can take advantage of hence our very own he's not a dada he's bra mark zuckerberg rebranded his company and called the metaverse <laughs> essentially preparing himself for the virtual world which i don't assume somewhat <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah apple is apple has given him hope you know, I'm sure yesterday's announcement about the Apple Vision Pro had Mike Mark Zuckerberg go like, "Yes, finally somebody's on my team." I I I, I beg to differ. Oh, why? I think he he had a lot of head scratching to do because his beta verse was so interested in creating avatars, but Apple is telling you that you can be who you are. And the you that is you is what we'll be used to interface. So that's the day. So <laughs> to be honest, the meta the meta switch is one of the biggest tech L's we've seen <laughs> in a long time. Yeah. I mean Mark Zuckerberg really mm, took a big F L yeah. with with switching Facebook to Meta. But then again, now the question is for those who don't know, Apple has announced a virtual reality and augmented reality headset called the Apple Vision Pro. And you wear it on your face. So it's a computer that you wear on your face. Mm -hmm. For those who've experienced virtual reality, it's like a mask that you wear on your face and you can't see anything again. You know, you are inside a new world. You've probably seen those videos of people running away from things that only they can see. Mm -hmm. Apple has done some. You know, they've done their version <laughs> of this. And it's very interesting. It's the most probably, no, not probably, it is the most technologically advanced piece of hardware i have ever witnessed from apple um i will even say it is the most advanced vr headset well we haven't world. seen all of them <laughs> no you, so this it goes back to my point and this is charlie spiky and i have been fencing about this vision pro for like since yesterday for 24 hours for 24 <laughs> hours now here's the thing if you want to know like Spikey said, one of the main deterrents of entering the VR space has always been the price point and not even necessarily the immersion, the immersive capabilities of mm. it, but 
also the size and bulk of that is the price you pay for the image because you have to wear it on your head if you want a vague mem uh, image of what the head vr headsets typically look like you know medical when he's doing his music video sometimes he's wearing those ski masks on his face some of, some of these musicians wear mm. that think about it like that but a little bigger and a little heavier because it has computer bits yeah it literally. has full 4k screens on each eye I, so essentially what you're doing is you're wearing two 4k screens on your eye you to a, help you see things as you would in, in real life so you yeah. know your eyes each eye is seen from a different angle to give you depth to give you depth to be able to perceive things in a 3d space a three-dimensional mm -hmm. space now that's the same thing that this computer that you're wearing on your face is trying to do and apple's one has probably why do i keep saying probably because i haven't experienced it but yes what from what they say the best screens on any vr headsets one yeah. It is lined with cameras everywhere, inside and, okay. out. Outside. and outside. Yeah. yeah, inside to look at your eyes because that's how you control the, st the thing. And that's you look, how it actually gives you, if you want to lock your device and unlock it. Yeah, it, it looks at your eyes. It eye. looks at your eye. So now you have optic ID. Yeah. Wow. See, when I said this is the most advanced it tech. It is. It is. And then, so when you look left, then the cursor moves left. If you've ever used Toby eye tracking, you know what I'm talking about. Like you look here and then it moves there. Then it has cameras on the outside that are looking at whatever's happening around you and recreating that in the screens to let you have an immersive yet not a withdrawn experience. So it's not like you're secluded. It's not like you're outside of where you are. You're actually inside where you are and you're seeing and whatever you're seeing, the OS is superimposed on your space. Mm. Right. I mean, we we don't want to get into the nitty gritties of what VR is, because I have certain uh, thoughts about Apple's execution. Mm. But the main thing is that as a piece of technology, it is very welcome and it is actually extremely amazing mm. because the the quantity of tech that is in that it has an M2 processor inside of it. It is a computer by On itself. Itself. It is made from aluminum and um, glass. Glass which means that it's actually heavy. And it has a battery, a dedicated battery pack that unfortunately you have to put in your back pocket like a wallet. Only two I hour mean, run time. Better that than the back of your head. Adding Fair. to the weight. Fair. And it's only a two hour run Which time. is what I, I, I thought Apple should have done better with. You know, because two hours apparently you can actually connect the battery to um, a type you a, know a power source then they are tethered it at the same time and you are tethered yes so I mean, that, if you are sitting now in your couch it wouldn't what be what if i'm playing um chaskele in vr and then i don't for unplug them or get a longer charger cable yeah then end up wrapping myself around in charger cable <laughs> then don't over i can't even see yeah. i'm playing chaskele. actually you can because Wait, it has passed two vision it, only when somebody enters the room so yes if you are in vr for those who have ever experienced vr you know how <laughs> and this is a very interesting thing because i have a story to tell a friend of mine came to try my vr and wanted to watch some content that's you know <laughs> and i let him watch this content and for the better part of this he forgot that he was surrounded <laughs> <laughs> and the content got the better of him and he started to it started, oh. it started to sound expensive <laughs> <laughs> and you know unfortunately because he had earphones in he also he, couldn't he hear, hear the presence of people around so this is where the apple headset would have saved him yeah. all that embarrassment you know because yeah VR can be quite convincing. Very immersive <laughs> sometimes. If you so if you don't want to be watching, you know, um, Fifty Shades of Grey, and then you have visitors come in and you don't know that you have visitors come well. in. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. So yeah, but with the Apple Vision Studio, the moment somebody enters, it becomes transparent to let you know that Obi Wan. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, it is a hefty price, and it's at three thousand five hundred dollars. For me, this is why this is why I was driving at. It is the best piece of tech we've seen in a long time. It is a very good precursor of what the future is. Mm. However, if your device is cost $3,500 and your nearest competitor typically sells theirs at $1,500, you better come in swinging. 
so i think what this has what apple has done with this vision pro is not necessary they have not radically changed the game if you ask me mm. what i think they've done is that they've thrown the gauntlet to other um companies to make them realize that you know what all the vr tech that you've been hiding in the back there because you don't want to make it too expensive take put inside and drop it and let's see we need to get this industry moving so just drop it if it will be five thousand dollars or whatever just drop it and see people may not buy but it might just be good advertisement and now we can focus on how to make it cheaper so i think them announcing it now and then saying it's going to be available next year is to make available the to give opportunity to developers to make yeah you know, applications, applications and other things content available also samsung and google are partnering to re-enter the uh, vr game because the uh, google glasses was put on ice it seems like they might be about to revive it with Samsung. you know this is one thing i like about apple apple will trigger everybody yeah. in the industry to wake no, up but this was before okay well yeah they could but this was before the apple but then again people knew for a long time that it's the tech was, or that people yeah. they are preparing to launch yeah. this and they've been doing ar with their phones anyways mm. yeah. So we're about to go to do tech jargon and there's no soundtrack so michael hit it dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> so the tech jargon for the evening is uh, widget which is an application or a component haven't you already explained <laughs> yeah i have but then prince i should do it again <laughs> my teacher said i should do it <laughs> So it's an application which enables a user to perform or function or access a service that can be added to your device's home screen in a quick way so you can quickly access information without having to open the full app itself like your calendar, battery, weather, Contact. so on and so forth. So yes, thank you very much Michael for the second deeper explanation of widgets. Um, my favorite is unlawful data obtained without authorization. Mm-hmm. Okay, so okay that had nothing to do with the show um thank you very much for listening if you missed this show it's going to be available on apple podcast spotify google podcast um youtube facebook myjohnline.com and my Online app adam online app go there search for hashtag G- joy, joy geek squad and if you want to join the telegram group is t.me slash joy geek squad my name is Kobe spike and chrome i've been doing this with winston and michael we'll catch you next week tuesday on another episode peace